Allen Iverson can take over a game as very few guards can. Allen Iverson also has cursed out his coach after being taken out of games. He creates with incredible speed. He slows his team's progress by missing practice, then assigning the fault to a bodyguard who, he said, failed to deliver a message. In the cover story, David Aldridge takes a closer look at the man who calls himself the answer. There is no gray with Allen Iverson. He is either saint or sinner, immature to a fault or wise beyond his years, the best, brightest light in the NBA, or its most egregious example of me-first attitude. Maybe there's some truth in all of it. One thing about him, he's, he's not a selfish player at all. And I, coming here, that's what I was thinking. It's just that, you know, he... he He's basically played one way his whole life, and, you know, for everybody he's played for, they've always told him to score. Allen Iverson has definitely, from my lips to your ears, gotten better, both on and off the court. Oh, I think he's made a lot of progress, but uh, I think he's got a long way to go, David. I think as I get older, you know, I, I'll change, I'll get more mature, and I do things different ways. But for now, I mean, I'm so satisfied with who I am, you know, as a person. In his third NBA season, Iverson dominates games from his new position shooting guard. He now has the green light to shoot early and often. With Iverson scoring and his teammates' defense, the Sixers are winning for the first time in a long time. And there's so many, so many advantages when you're playing the two. I mean, um, a lot of two guys have to guard me now, you know, because Eric's the point, and, you know, they're not used to guarding people as, as quick as me. At times, he could be an Isaiah and let other people get involved, recognize who needs the ball, who hasn't had a shot in a while, you know, control the pace of the game, and that other times, like Michael, take over and not only create for himself, but be in a position to make other players around him better. Off the floor, Iverson has also taken more control of his life. He says he's cut some of the associations with acquaintances that got him in hot water with the league during his first two seasons. Being real is being real to yourself. Being real is, is doing what's right for your family and friends, for your kids, for yourself. Being real is not selling drugs and then going out and um, shooting people. I mean, that ain't, that ain't real. No, nah, you can't hang with me. I, I haven't changed. But no, nah, you can't hang him because you're doing the same old stuff. But Iverson is still a work in progress. He's been late for a few practices this season. And earlier this month, he acknowledged he was wrong for cursing at Brown over playing time in a key game against Cleveland. Their relationship continues to ride a precarious fault line. He doesn't hate me, you know. Yeah, I, he don't have any reason to hate me. He's just trying to help me, help our team. Once you start to understand that, it's easy to deal with any coach, regardless if he's a, a, a or not. I can't tell Larry not to be so candid after games. I called him a marketing nightmare one time. But his honesty, you got to really love his honesty. Alan, I can't tell him not to fly off the handle if he's not playing enough minutes. Because he wants to play minutes. He wants to play basketball. Is he coachable, Alan? <laughs> Allen is Allen. You try to translate something to him, and, and as any as any player, anybody will initially go out and try to do it your way. And if for some reason or another he doesn't have success that way, he'll revert back to his own way. And you just have to reiterate time and time again uh, what you like to do. Iverson's put up big numbers. Player of the month and player of the week honors have come his way. The scoring title and MVP awards are still there for the taking, but Brown wonders if the individual goals are taking away from Iverson's team concept. I think he really does want us to win, and I, I believe in his heart he would love to sacrifice a scoring title or an all-star berth um, for us being successful, but the people around him might not, and that's the most difficult thing I think I face. I wish I could find this article to show him where Isaiah said, I could score 50 points every night, but in order for me to win a championship, I have to set my values in a team aspect. 
But the Sixers know that they'll only go as far as Iverson can take them. It won't matter if the ride is bumpy as long as their charismatic leader leads them somewhere. Playoffs would be a nice start. I made mistakes, and, and I have to deal with it. But I think over time, you know, people will start to accept me, and they'll start to understand me a little bit more. So I'm just being patient with that. David Aldridge reporting. The question about the answer is, does Iverson check the stat sheet before he examines the standings? The Sixers are a combined one over 500 when he scores 25 to 39 points. But consider his shot selection. There are seven Philadelphia players averaging 10 or more minutes per game who have higher shooting percentages than Iverson. What's he doing tonight, Bob? Well,